Hey, what's going on? It's Coach Luca back here, and today uh, in a coach's corner, actually, I just kind of want to break down uh, a system. I want to give you guys a simple system when it comes to nutrition coaching. This is a question that comes up a lot, like uh, you know, how to simplify and teach the like nutrition. What are the next steps for a client, even for yourself if you're watching this, right? And so. What I wanted to go, I wanted to make it practical. So I'm gonna go through uh, these six kind of steps that I would say uh, you know, precision nutrition teaches, which I love the system. But what I'm gonna do is dive in and just actually give you examples, practical examples, and dive into each one a little bit more. And I'm pretending like somebody's coming you know, to see us. So we have a 30 day results in advance program, which is essentially a paid trial. And this would kind of be the process that we go through for a new person to help them with their nutrition, right? Uh, because folks go like, well, do you do meal plans, like recipe books, what are you doing? So look, we're gonna zoom out and do principles, and then I'm gonna go into strategies and kind of like practical examples so it makes sense. And we always explain this, you know, I love this analogy of a GPS for anything, you know, when it comes to training, lifestyle, mindset, uh, nutrition. The, the thing is that people come to see us for a result, right? For a destination, essentially. Now look, the destination may be sustainable change in lifestyle and nutrition and training and whatnot, but essentially they're here, right? They're at point A, okay? And they wanna get to point B, you know? And we, first of all, we wanna find out what that point B is. Uh, there's actually a question that we ask, it's, it's in our uh, client intake form, which I'll talk about in a second. But it's like, hey, if I could wave a magic wand, you know, today and then overnight, you wake up and your life is exactly the way that you want it to be. You know, tell me how you're feeling. What are you looking like? How is life? What things are not in your life anymore, right? What things are in your life? So we kind of create this picture of point B. And the thing is point B may have a uh, data, you know, external data attached to it or it might have internal feelings, right? How do people feel? Oh, I'm not feeling pain in my back anymore, right? That's that's a harder, I mean, it, it, it can be measured subjectively, right? On a scale of one to 10, how much? How much do you feel your back? If it's seven out of 10 now and it goes down to two out of 10, that's progress on the GPS, right? But on that GPS, we wanna find out, you know, different things that that client wants. You know, and again, that might be, it, you know, a lot of times it could be weight loss, body fat percentage, a, a lot more of what we're seeing. And what I love to do is like blood work markers, right? Like deep health, right? To see, again, if they're deficient in certain things, cholesterol, hormones, right? We're getting a lot more of this, but again, it's gonna be determined by the client, like what is it that they want? And then we're gonna kind of go, okay, cool. How can we monitor that? How can we track that? But so once we get to point B, we gotta realize, we gotta find out what the point A is. Now, I love this uh, quote that talks, that says awareness precedes change, right? When you don't know what you don't know, then you, don't, you, you may not even know that you're not doing it wrong, right? That, that, you're do, that you're doing it wrong. But before awareness precedes change, we have to have assessment because assessment precedes awareness, right? Just like, you know, you check your bank account and see where you're spending money, that, that's an assessment. You're like, oh shit, uh, I'm, like, I'm, I'm spending money, a ton of money on going out, drinks, shoes, whatever it may be, right? That assessment preceded awareness. Now that awareness can be like, okay, look, I gotta be smarter with my money, okay? It's the same thing when it comes to lifestyle and nutrition and everything else, right? So we got we find out what the point A is, okay? And this is kind of where our six step process begins, right? That what is point A? Now, in the six step process, part one is assess and gather data, right? So essentially we're collecting information, we're collecting our uh, client's current goals, right? That point B, needs and skills. This is important. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, now, before we go to step one, I said point zero is plan and prepare. So what is plan and prepare? Well, I'll give you an example. So somebody reaches out to you, somebody reaches out to us, they fill out a form for the 30-day trial, okay? They go, okay, cool, I wanna do the 30-day results in advance program, they pay for that program. What we do from here, plan and prepare, starts with this, is a client intake form. Now, I'm gonna give you guys a bonus and like put that client intake form in the comments and the show notes so you can actually look at it, right? And it took me quite a bit of time, energy and money to devise that with somebody very, very smart. That is 33 questions. And we find out a lot about that person from those questions. 
Um, everything from one is like what their goals are, that magic wand question is in there, but it's like what type of support do they have, right? Who's supporting them? We find out more about them personally too, which, which matters because then we can connect further. But then we see like what foods do they like? You know, do they, do they, would they not, you know, do they not want to track their macros and calories? Because if a person doesn't want to do that, great, now we know we're going to take a different approach in monitoring, okay? We find out what they've done for exercise, their, their health history. Do they have any injuries or any medications? What foods do they like, uh, like and love? And then what do they hate? Meaning like what stuff is out? But really what we're doing here is like before they ever set foot, you know, in, inside of the gym or sitting down with us, or again, if you're doing this online before they get on a call with you or anything else or emails, we, we have a bunch of information, right? So we're talking about that step one here. We plan them prepared and that got us a whole bunch of information. Okay. Now, based on, like when we look at that assess and gather data, that information may be, and again, it may not be because uh, it depends what that client wants. Some people don't want to weigh in. Some people don't want to do uh, body fat percentages, which is completely okay and understandable. But for most, for many, it's going to be that, right? So we're going to go, uh, I would say, specific data info that we're going to gain to get us insight on point A. Now, one of the things that is for everybody that we do is almost always that first week, like step one of the assess and gather once we sit down with them, is to discover and in some way monitor, right? So step one is gonna be monitoring. Now, some people will do like three days. We really like to get a full week of a, a normal week of eating. This can be in a number of different ways. Right, it could be an app like a MyFitnessPal. Okay, it could be pictures. It could be a journal of writing it down. Right, pretty precisely. Now, what we tell clients is go like, hey, look, you know, if you're putting things in a, a MyFitnessPal, something like that, we're not saying that that's what you're gonna do for forever. We just want a couple of weeks of this because it now it creates awareness for the client. Okay, so this is what's really important. It's like. This goes for you, but it creates awareness for the client. Like, what are they actually doing? Oop, now, oop, I'm having two glasses of wine every evening. Oh, wow, like I'm snacking a lot, right? So in some way or another, for at least a week, we're going to monitor. Many times, it might be that the first action step is just monitoring, okay? So we might go two weeks of monitoring. Because, in, and the thing is, the data shows that when people start monitoring and they become aware, that in and of itself changes their behaviors. Okay, so again, this is very, very important because just knowing where you are, trust me, like if there's something in your life that you don't like and then you dig into it, you know, I use finances, for example, or blood work's been a big one. We've done a lot of the blood work here at, you know, where, where we send people to get blood work done and they come back and go like, holy crap, like there's things that aren't that good, right? Like it, for instance, m metabolic tests, if you do go, you do your VO2 max test, it's like, hey, your conditioning is not good. Like, all of these are assessments that create awareness, right? And the doctor goes or the person, hey, listen, you got to improve this. Great, so we, we got to improve it. Now we have some data and we can move forward and create a plan on how to do that. But back to the nutritional part. So again, we da gather data, we, we monitor, right? Because we got to see what's really, really going on and we got to find that point A on the GPS. And what's interesting that the point A on the GPS that I've shown here is that, right? It's, it's very rarely like linear especially when it comes to like lifestyle changes and nutrition coaching, right? It's more like you move forward and then there's a problem and you go like this and then, right? And you keep moving towards that point B. So, you know, coaching and support helps guide that person. And when they hit an obstacle, helps them overcome the obstacles through this process, right? So assessing and gathering data. So I'm going to take a, a, a just an, a, a kind of generic example here where the person sits down with us. We got their client intake form, right? They come in. And we give them one of those, basically one of the steps is gonna be like, look, for the next seven, 14 days, we're gonna just monitor. And of course, look, you're gonna be coaching them and checking in with them. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, but just to find out where they're at. This is very, very, very important. Now, what we're also gonna find out is their skills, right? So we, we talk about willing and able, right? What is somebody willing to do? And then what somebody is able to do? For example, 
If we say, okay, look, you're gonna start cooking more meals at home, which I think for people that are always eating out, if you start cooking meals at home, it's gonna improve your nutrition, you're gonna eat healthier, you're gonna eat better, you're gonna see results in your body composition, like we see it all the time. But what if somebody doesn't really have the ability to cook at home or don't, doesn't have the skills to cook at home, right? So we gotta, we gotta find that out, okay? This is important, right? What are they willing to do, what they're able to do? Which means that you gotta answer, ask questions and, and dive deeper into like, finding out what their lifestyle's like. Oh, I work, you know, I work a 14 hour day and only thing I can go to for lunch is a cafeteria. Okay, so then now we're gonna have to explore what that cafeteria has and dive deeper into that, which takes us to understand and explore, right? So let's take this red one to do this, right? So you have to understand and you have to uh, kind of dive into your client's story and situation, right? So what I mean by that is, if you just go generically X's and O's, like, oh, okay, cool, well, listen, uh, we're gonna set a calorie amount, right? Like, if, you're, if your goal is fat loss, weight loss, and, you know, we we're, gonna, we're gonna try to have you be at X, Y, Z amount of calories. And that's just it, we just, we just do that, and we don't try to see what skills that they have. For instance, a skill is monitoring, monitoring like, putting stuff into uh, my fitness pal, right? And they may be so, it, that might stress them out so much that that goes out the window. So we might go like, hey, are you comfortable taking pictures of every meal, right? Yeah, that's, that's easy. I feel comfortable doing that. Okay, great, let's do that, right? So now we're monitoring that way. Um, but again, if, if you go and just like, hey, let's just set calories and macros, man, we're not understanding them. Like, we're not trying to understand their life. Like, what have they struggled with in the past? You know, what worked for them well? What didn't work for them? You know, what were they able to sustain? So think about that because this will matter, you know, when, when they start saying like, hey, look, like I got a you know, family at home, they cook, I can't really affect how they're cooking. It's always, you know, high fat, you know, high calorie food, so on and so forth. I, now I'm starting to understand the story. So this is gonna make me have a better assessment of when we go to strategize and plan, right? So again, the simple explanation of this is just digging deeper. And like, what I love here is like, hey, tell me a little bit more about that. Tell me what you're struggling with, I'd really, I'm curious, like the, the word, I'm curious, not just saying a word, but like being curious. I'm curious, like help me understand, you know, where are you running into problems? What do you, what do you feel are the top two things that are stopping you from gaining the results that you want, right? Because now we're gaining understanding and this is gonna influence, you know, this next part. Again, right, where it's very, very easy for you to go like, oh great, well this person, wants to do this, so we're gonna get their calories about 300 under maintenance, you know, we're gonna get their protein up, so on and so forth, but you're not understanding, right? And again, it's very easy, especially online, to be like, well, you know, I'm gonna just churn and burn. Here's your macros, here's your calories. That's not coaching, right? Anybody can do that. You can Google that, right? So this takes us to, once you understand and explore, we're gonna start drafting an initial action plan and possible next steps. And uh, there's, all, there's, there's a vlog and video I did with, uh, with Tiny Habits where we kind of use some of the strategies in that video to show you how you can do this. But what we tend to do here is like, I always, call, I call it experiments, right? When we're doing stuff with clients, I say like, listen, we're gonna do an experiment for the next two weeks, okay? So one of the experiments is of, co of course gonna be monitoring, but here, here's the other thing too. Uh, understand that sometimes clients can be frustrated if you're like, oh, all you want me to do is monitor. Right? And of course, the thing is, is like, you try to relay how that's gonna be very beneficial and it may already improve their nutrition. But we're usually gonna go like, let's monitor and we're gonna give them some type of actionable step. Like something, because the thing is, if you, you gotta give steps to where people feel, not only that they have control, but they have, uh, I would say, uh, not yes, I'm gonna say control, but hope, right? Like they can take an actionable step to move forward, right? Because there's hope in moving forward and taking action, okay? So I, I call it using experiments to test the ideas. So we're gonna wanna know what we're measuring as a baseline, right? So for example, I'm gonna give an example here. This client came in, first we're gonna wanna monitor and find out what they're actually doing and then number two, you know, uh, for, let, let's say, right, let's say that in this case, we'd wanna measure how much protein they're eating in every meal, right? Because most people don't know that, right? And we'd say, hey, listen, like, we wanna measure as a baseline. Our baseline is gonna be trying to get 30 to 40 grams of protein in per every meal, right? That's gonna be the next actionable step. And we're changing one thing at a time here. But here's the thing, like, we wanna do at least two, three weeks of that thing. 
right? So most people change this too fast, like five, six, seven days in, it's like, okay, let's add another thing, let's add another thing. Changing habits is not, is not that fast, right? It's not that fast. And the thing is, if the thing that you're changing, for example, adding protein to every meal, is gonna make a big difference, right? Big, big difference. And without going into too much kind of uh, geeky data, but like when it was two groups presented, one was like, hey, just eat what, you, what you're eating. And the other group was like, eat what you're eating, but have 30 to 40 grams of protein for every meal. The group that added the protein, that was the only action step that they had. They didn't have any, uh, I would say, restrictions or anything else, right? That group was eating 400, almost 450 calories less per day. So adding protein, because it was made you more full, made, I would say, the clients eat less calories overall. So I'm saying like one step can make a huge difference in, in a diet, right? And then uh, consider graphing the vi a visual data for a person, right? So I, this is just kind of like an, some asterisks to when you do experiments to implement ideas, right? But this is where you kind of draft the initial action plan and possible next steps. Now, I believe that giving clients choice is really, really powerful. So for example, once we kind of go over, you know, where they're at right now, what the struggles they're having. I will many times go like, what do you feel are some things that you know you could do to help you? So remember, they have, they have more knowledge and resources about themselves than you do. You're just trying to bring them out. So maybe they go like, well, you know, I definitely gotta eat better, you know, at lunch. Like at lunch, I'm always doing X, Y, Z. All right, cool. So we, you know, we'd write it down, right? And we'd circle that. Okay, then what's another one? For instance, they'd be, they'll be like, well, because like I, I go super long without food and then in the evenings, like I binge and I don't prepare food. Okay, cool, that might be another one, right? So maybe we get like three options here. And from there, right, what we're gonna do, cause we're, remember this is strategizing, right? We're strategizing here. And this moves us to the choose act, next action and try. And so this is where we're gonna pick one. So let's say we have three. I would say, which one do you want to attack first, right? Which one do you want to attack first? Now, they, they'll give you one. So, for example, let's say it's like, you know, I'm going to try to attack lunch. Okay, cool, and we take that. Now, before, before we move forward here, does it happen a lot of times that they don't know? They're like, I don't, I don't know. Okay, great. In this scenario, I say, would you like for me to share some of the things that have worked for other clients just like you? And they'll say yes, right? And then you give the choices, right? So then you'd have, like, all right, so this is one thing, this is another thing, this is another thing. So again, you give two or three options and then you ask them which one of these sounds like you'd like to take on first. Remember, they're making the choice, there's autonomy, there's proof that that makes the client more committed if they're making the choice. So let's stay, let's stay with this example for lunch, for example, right? And a simple solution here might be, you know, I would legitimately dig in, what are you currently eating for lunch? I go like cafeteria food, here's my choices, here's that, here's the other, right? Okay, great, so like, would you be open to doing a meal delivery service? And if they're like, yeah, absolutely. Hey, what are you currently spending for lunch? Well, about $17, $18. Okay, great, well, if, if we got you a, a basic meal delivery service that's 12 bucks per lunch, plus you could have a protein shake on top of that, you'd actually save a little bit of money and have a meal that, that fits your, uh, I would say fits your schedule, fits your goals, and they'd be like, oh yeah, I'd be interested in it. Okay. Then I, we ask the magic question. The magic question is, on a scale of one to 10, how confident do you feel you can do this 90% of the time? Okay. Now, if they say 10 or if they say nine, that's a go. If they say eight, it's a gray area. If it's seven, it's too hard, right? They should probably be a, be a nine or a 10. Okay, so it, because again, if a person doesn't believe that they'll do the action, they won't do the action. So in this case, they're like, oh yes, like I'm a nine on this. If I had the meal prepared, like all I had to do was heat it up and I had a shake, like, and it saves me money, I'm all in. So it may be now that, that we, have, we have one action, right? And we're testing this out, right? So we're deciding what to do next. We're deciding how to measure the action and we're enabling the action. So deciding how to measure the action is like, well, you'll tick it off, right? You'll tick off that you did it every day, okay? And, that, and you'll basically you'll track that. Now, whether you have, you know, they, they send you a text message, whether it's at the end of the week, there should always be an accountability check-in. We usually do it on Sundays, right? To measure the action. Like, so how consistent were you for that action? 
So it might be, you know, if it's a Monday through Friday because it's at work, it might be a five out of five, four out of five, three out of five. And then we'll ask them, like, you know, what went well? What could you have done better? Right? But again, we'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to that with the monitoring stuff. But really is like, this is where we're identifying, you know, two to three contenders. Then basically we're choosing one and then we're deciding how to measure the action. Right, so if, for example, if it wasn't like a, a meal delivery that they were using, it could be, are you getting 30 grams of protein in every meal, right? And are you getting a shake in a day so to, to hit your protein goals, right? Again, how are we gonna monitor, monitor that? We'd ask, how do we know that you were successful? It's like, well, I would have had that protein, I would have ate the protein, and I would have some type of accountability to that. Now the thing is, that could be daily, that could be weekly. And the thing is, whatever the client prefers, that's what that's what's best and this is what's cool if you have groups like for instance like we have a Facebook group and, and people can post in there that they did the thing as well right so again there's different ways to do this as far as the accountability part goes and we'll talk about that in a second but this is where you choose the action you get clear on what it is and you get on clear on the how right so think about this it has to be super super clear if you confuse you lose right Donald Miller says that in marketing it goes the same for nutrition the, the client has to be you know, very clear on what to do, the actionable step, which then leads us to observing and monitoring, right? Like once you set out this goal, or should I say this next step, you have to monitor it. Um, I think that different programs allow for different levels of accountability. You know, we do semi-private personal training here, so the coach is monitoring that person. So a lot of times we'll see, you know, when they're coming to the gym almost maybe not on a daily basis, but like four times a week, five times a week. And on Sundays, there's an email accountability check-in that kind of looks back at the week, right? So we're in an in accountability check-in, kind of rating their week, and then saying like, hey, my actionable step, how many times did I do it, right? Out of, you know, for instance, it was seven days a week, it's like, hey, I went five for seven. You know, it's, it's like pretty good. If before that they were doing it one out of seven and zero, like that's progress, all excellent. Great, how can we make it like, what, you know, what was an obstacle for you this past week? What went great? And then how can we do it better next week? Right, and, and now we try to improve it next week. And every two to three weeks, if they're doing that thing consistently, that's actionable step, now we can progress it. Right, but this is, you know, we're, we're recording what happens. There has to be some type of progress. Again, we focus very much so on the process and not the outcome. Now, does that mean that we measure things? Like for instance, if it's a weight loss goal, you know, and the person's like, yes, I want to measure that. Okay, cool, we're going to measure that. You know, so we have an in-body uh, in in-house, which means we can measure precise weight, body fat percentage. But, you know, ideally that's going to happen. I mean, some people will measure weight every day. I'm not against that if it doesn't stress them out. And then we'll have average weight for the week. Some people are too stressed about that. So we might measure every two weeks, maybe every four weeks. This is individual. But my point is, the thing that matters most is measuring the process. So the process is, you know, did you eat 30 grams of protein with every meal? Hey, did you have your meal delivery for, uh, for, um, for lunch? You know, maybe it was, hey, have a you know, protein shake before dinner. So kind of like that, you get a little bit more satiety and you don't overeat. Like there's a lot of strategic things that would be an actionable step here that we can then measure because if they follow the process, it's going to build on the outcome. Now, when we say record what, mat what matters, right? Here's what happens. Sometimes the things that you do won't work as well as you'd want them to, right? And that failure is just a lesson to move forward. That's why this is not a straight line on a GPS and you kind of, you move forward, something works and then something doesn't work as well. And you figure some, you know, it out and then if it works again, right? Again, it's an experiment and it's a process. And we're always monitoring to know what we're doing is working because that leads us to analyze and evaluate, right? And again, this is where we're using outcome-based decisions to, to decide what to do next, right? So again, something's working really well, great. Maybe we just do more of it. For example, what if we just changed one meal? And remember, this is what we do a lot of times. It's not, we don't go changing the whole day. You know, people have ingrained habits, maybe, you know, they're not eating breakfast and then they're over eating on later in the day. And if somebody, for, for example, you know, there's a lot of studies that show that uh, the older you get, the less protein you get in. 
and that most people get very little protein, 10% of their daily uh, basically recommendation in the morning for breakfast. So we would start by solving that problem and saying, let's, let's have a higher protein breakfast. So for that person, it might be a 40 grams of protein for breakfast, right? Well, so we're just addressing that one meal, right? So we're gonna address, so for instance, let's say we have breakfast, lunch, dinner, right? And this per person's under eating on protein. We're just gonna address breakfast, right? And let's say over the course of three weeks, we get that person to be 80% compliant, right? To eating 40 grams of protein pr for breakfast. So after three weeks, that's a pretty damn good success rate. Okay, cool, now we're gonna move on to lunch, right? And we're gonna work on that. So my point being is, if something's working, just do more of it, okay? Again, maybe we've solved something and then now we're moving on to the next obstacle. This is what, what happens, it's different for every person, right? It's, it's different for every person. Like we have, I mean, I can tell you one client that's been following their MyFitnessPal now for a 14, almost 1500 days, straight, every single day for 1500 days. That's definitely an outlier, right? Majority of people will not, uh, you know, for instance, like to be putting stuff into their phone every day. I know I don't. Uh, you know, Alan Aragon made a very, very good uh, observation. He said, if I'm, in a, if I'm in a room speaking to 100 fit pros, and I say, how many of you like to and track your calories and macros? And it's like only about 20% of the room will raise their hand. So out of 100, only 20. And these are fitness professionals. Right, people that like are into this, this is their profession, this is their career. So now imagine if you have you know, 100 people in a room, general population, trying to change their, their body and their life, like it's gonna be a lot less than, than 20, you know, 20%. It's probably gonna be like more like 8%, you know, 10, 5%, something like that. Which just means that you know, sometimes you're trying to push a round peg through a square hole and saying like, we want you to diligently track certain things where you can change how you monitor things, um, but not do it, for instance, into an app. And this is where, again, we analyze and evaluate. Like, we, we see what's working, we see what's not working, and we make changes, right? And I always say, like, there's a four-step process, right? You, you learn, you apply, you reflect, and then you course correct, right? This is a little bit more kind of like in detail on how you do this. And again, there's tons of tactics in the toolbox to support every one of these. Like for instance, we have like recipe books at Vigor Ground, you know, five ingredient recipe books, high protein recipe book. Uh, we have a, a plant-based one. We have um, a lower carb one. It's just a lot of options. And the thing is, it's just a resource. So then with, with, with a client, we can go like, hey, look, you can, like you don't have a lot of time for making breakfast. Okay, great. Here's a bunch of different ideas and different choices to make sure that you get a breakfast in that's gonna support your goals and you know they may say well but i love intermittent fasting okay so then we dive into that we go okay great how are we going to do how are we going to intermittent fast on the daily every other day once a week there's so many different tactics and options and again that that should be your toolbox as a coach to have and build and give those choices right so that then we the person can pick two to three choice uh, from two to three choices take the next actionable step so again this is the framework for nutrition coaching where there's tons and tons of examples. I've done podcasts, they dive deeper into, you know, it's, it's tons of examples as far like how you can give a tactic to a person, right? But the overarching view, this is what we do, and this is how when somebody comes in and they're a new client, you can take them through this process and get them moving forward. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of the, I would say, processes that we have here at Bigger Ground and that I use for, for my coaching, both for training and nutrition uh, and helping somebody achieve the results. Uh, I'll definitely shoot more of these, but again, let me know if this was helpful. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.